me tying up a spent wing caddis fly. Um, caddises are one of my favorite patterns to to fish with, um, whether it's a a nymph or a, a dry elk hair kind of gear hair caddis. Um, but this one is one I haven't tried before. It's a spent wing um, version of the caddis fly, and I really like the way that this um, pattern works and and turns out. We're going to. I've got a size 14 hook dry fly hook here in the vise. I've got little strands of of hair, not hair, but parts of my thread sticking out all over the place. And by the way, that's what happens when you inadvertently um, get your thread hitting the barb of your or the tip of your hook. So we've got a four, size 14, I'm using a, it's a 14 dry, using a, a kind of a tannish, a tan colored uh, sheer 14 knot. First material we're going to tie in is going to be some um, cinnamon caddis, uh, which is a, matches this pattern really nicely. Since this is a 14, I am going to go a little bit, um, usually I get just a tiny little bit. Still not a whole lot of it, uh, but of the super fine, but uh, maybe more than I usually would because the the hook is size is a little bit bigger, and I'm using the bigger hook just to hopefully make it easier to see on 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 camera. So I've got that kind of dubbed on here. I am going to take several wraps here at the back, and we're going to do a reverse taper on this because that's kind of how caddis flies typically are. So we're going to be a little bit thicker here towards the, the back of the hook. And then we will get it kind of narrower in profile as we move up the shank of the hook. So we should be left with something like that. So hopefully you can see that reverse taper here with our super fine dubbing. So our next step is we're going to tie in a wing and we're going to use partridge feather and I'm using a bleached um, partridge feather. Uh, it's going to look something about like this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hold it by the tip and we're going to strip off as much of the fuzzy bits as we can. Just to prepare this feather. I'm going to want it fair, I'm going to want it even on either side so I'll be a little bit particular when I'm stripping those fibers off. So now that we've got the fuzzy bits kind of uh cleaned off here, we should have a nice clean feather uh looking about like that. And we're going to want to tie this in right over the center of the hook. So I'm going to kind of hold that on into place. Going to clamp that down a little bit closer to me knowing my thread is going to pull that stem up and over towards the lens a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I get that turned and um, centered where I want this. So now we're going to just come in and we're going to clip off the balance of that partridge feather with our scissors. We'll be left with a nice looking uh, wing that's going to extend over the back of the hook a little bit there. Um, good looking wing going on there. We're going to come back so we can tie in our hackle material that we're going to use. And I'm just going to use a grizzly hackle. I've already selected one um, for my uh, the hackle skin and it's uh, grizzly. I'm just going to go ahead and strip off several of the fibers here at the bottom so I have a tie-in point about like that so we've got our hackle uh, feather prepared we've got the stem showing there I've rotated my thread backwards just so that I make sure that I can get this tight in right where I want uh, this hackle to start take a couple of thread wraps back to secure that in place I'm going to move my thread up forward towards the eye of the hook here. 
uh, with some fairly thick firm wraps but not incredibly hard because I don't want to cut through um, that stem I'm gonna go ahead and clip off that excess material right there I'm gonna go ahead and cover that butt end up and I'm gonna come right on back and we're gonna um, just put a another small layer of this uh, super fine um, this time I don't want to use much at all I'm not trying to build too beefy of a thorax here um, more what I'm trying to do is uh, get myself a nice uh, foundation uh, for uh, palmering this hackle um, up the up towards the eye of the hook so I've got that finger dubbed on take a few wraps back there where that hackle is starting I'll tighten this up as I go along and I want to finish that up pretty close to about an eye length away grab our hackle pliers it just helps me make sure I hold sometimes uh, this is long enough I could use my hands but it, I like the hackle plier because it just helps me ensure that I'm pulling that straight up and down I always find I get a better result that way <clears throat> I'm gonna pull that hackle fiber forward and I'm gonna crimp it right at the base right where I want it to start make sure I get one good turn right around where I'm starting and then I'm just going to take some loose wraps, um, moving up towards the eye of the, the hook here. And I'm not looking for a huge, um, bulky um, bit of hackle here. This is one of those cases where your, your hackle can be actually a little bit messier. Um, now that I've got that where I want it, I'm holding that hackle straight up and I'm going to just take my um, thread, kind of wiggle it through, kind of get that over the top of the piece of hackle that I've just tied in. Um, once I've done that, I'll pull that hackle backwards a little bit and I'll do the same thing and get a couple of wraps in front um, towards the eye of the hook. And with that, I should be um, at a point where I can release that hackle um, from my hackle plier. And I'm going to grab just my bodkin that I use um, from time to time. Uh, this old thing, um, just because I like the uh, hollow end there, in order to at least secure the thread here. And that first uh, knot is pretty important because um, from from here it's pretty much stuck in place. Sorry, I'm having to look a little bit sideways. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and let my thread dangle there. I'm gonna take a look from the side and look at right where that hackle fiber is. My hackle is attached to the hook shank because that's right where I want to snip it off nice and tight something like that yeah and we do have a few fibers that are sticking out over the eye and that's okay we're gonna uh, we're not gonna whip finish this I'm just gonna use this and, and do several of these knots uh, pushing those fibers over the eye um, a little bit back I uh, don't need to push them back too far, but, you know, a little bit. And once I get to this point, I'm just going to come in with my whip finisher that has a, a nice little cutting tool on the back end of it. And we'll use that to cut the balance of this thread off here. Just like so. I'm going to come in and clean things up and I'll be right back.
And so there you have it. Here's the spent wing uh, caddis. I'm looking at it profile. Um, this is where I'm going to be a little bit pickier is um, in choosing the the partridge feather that I'm going to have laying over the top here. Um, and then just using kind of a natty looking uh, grizzly hackle here across the top. Um, great looking fly. Give it a shot.